What's the word, y'all? Welcome back to Kenny For Real. I had already had a video um, recorded and about to upload, and then this whole piece came out about the Clippers, and it's just something about the Clippers where, like, they turn themselves into villains in the NBA world, so when you talk about the Clippers, everybody loves it. And, man, this article by Johan Buha of The Athletic, and I could be mispronouncing both of those names, was amazing. I mean, it talked about a lot of things we already knew, but there were some new things that came into the thing. Mostly talk about the team chemistry, superstar treatment things that had to do with Kawhi and Paul George and how rubbed the teammates the wrong way, and we're going to talk about all of that. Be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe if you're new, use that comment section because it is an open discussion. I'm going to give my opinions about the Clippers. You may disagree, and that is completely okay. Um, also, I dropped a video yesterday that's completely different than anything we've done on this channel. I had an interview slash conversation with Tyrese Halliburton, and it was a W. Um... I want to do more things like that where I bring NBA players, executives, people in the media on and just have conversations with them. And for the people that did watch it, they did enjoy it. So if, even if it's not your cup of tea, I recommend going to check it out. Give it a couple minutes. And if you don't like it, that's completely fine. I'm all open to constructive criticism to get better as an interviewer and get better as a content creator. And I also want that video to do good because I can use that as a reference to get other people on the show. So if I send some good statistics to somebody's manager or, or their agent, then they'll get them on the show because we know that when Kenny talks to an NBA player, it's at least getting 80,000 views. It's at least getting 100,000 views. So go run it up. Let's talk about the Clippers. Oh, man. Um, I have not talked about the Clippers since, you know, that day. Since that day where they blew that lead. And that was a great day as an NBA fan. I mean, it's probably a terrible day for a Clippers fan. But as an NBA fan, that was a great day to see them blow a 3-1. Because this is a team that we all basically wrote into the conference finals at least. The LA versus LA conference finals. And they didn't live up to that. I, I honestly do believe that the Clippers are one of those teams that... The hiatus of the NBA season hurt them, probably the most out of any team in the league, right? I went back to watch old podcasts between me and my guys and when we were talking about the Clippers, and one of the things that we continuously said throughout the course of the season is that what scared us the most about the Clippers was um, they weren't really playing together. And I don't mean like they weren't swinging a ball or they weren't playing great team defense. I literally mean that they weren't playing together. The two superstar players that they brought into the locker room, Kawhi Leonard, Paul George, had only played 50% of their games together. That was scary to us. And honestly, I think that the Clippers' plan was we're going to chill out for the first half of the season. Second half, we'll ramp it up, and then we might not see Kawhi set out a lot. We might not see Paul George set out a lot because we want to build that chemistry to lead into the playoffs. And obviously, the hiatus hit. And right before the hiatus hit, they were on a nice little win streak. They had a couple really big Ws under their belt, um, and they were starting to look better as a team. But then it got put on pause, and now they're lacking that chemistry. Not only that, once we got to the bubble, they saw three of their, their uh, top rotational players miss time. Lou Williams uh, lost someone in his family and had to go to a funeral and everything and, and, uh, in Atlanta. Uh, Montrez Harrell, I think, lost his grandmother, and, and, and may they both rest in peace. So he had to leave time. And then when he came back, obviously, he didn't look good at all. You know, they basically just threw him into a playoff series and like, okay, Montrez, you haven't played basketball in eight months. Let's see what you got. And it just didn't work out. And then Patrick Beverly uh, had a hamstring injury, a calf injury, one or the other, and he missed – most of that regular season play-in stuff, and then he missed the first series of the playoffs completely. So three of their top rotational guys were missing time, and once they got together, it just didn't look good together. So one of the things that, that bothered me the most when it happened in real time was after they blew this championship. So first of all, after game six, um, Paul just goes to the state, the podium and be like, hey, we're still in control. Um, we have just blown a 3-1 lead, and now we're going into a game seven, but we still have control of this series, which is like, no, you, you, you didn't. You didn't have control anymore. And then after game seven, when they lost, he said that this was not a championship or bust season. And I kind of understand what he's trying to say, because most of those players will be back this season. They only lost Montrezl Harrell, um, but they brought in Serge Ibaka. So I understand what he was trying to say, I guess. And this wasn't like if we don't win a championship this year, the world is going to end. But you undoubtedly didn't hit those expectations. And Lou Williams said that right after he left the podium. Like, yes, this was 100% a championship or bust season. Like, it was all written for us to go out there, win, and make the championship, and they weren't able to do it. Hell, yo, yesterday, the Minnesota Timberwolves published a picture on their official Twitter that was a, bo a board of, like, a checklist of things that they want to do as an organization this season. The first one said, like, make the playoffs. Cool. That should be every team's aspirations. But then they went deeper make the conference finals, and win the championship. 
That is the Minnesota Timberwolves with championship aspirations, Paul George. And a team with two superstars like the Clippers didn't have... It just, it just doesn't really make sense. Um, so in this article, the, there was a lot of things that we already knew as NBA fans that we've talked about before. But some of the new things were like this, this perks, this superstar treatment that Kawhi and Paul George got throughout the season. And superstar treatment is not nothing new. It's not like it just was created with the Clippers. LeBron gets it. Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, Damian Lillard. Every superstar in the league, Giannis, is going to get superstar treatment because once you're the top of your game at anything, not just basketball, once you're at the top of your game, you're going to get extra perks on top of it. It's just the way life works, right? But the difference between Damian Lillard getting championship treatment and Paul George getting championship treatment is that Damian Lillard is not just a superstar on the court. He's a superstar off the court. And I'm not talking about his rapping. I mean, when it comes to team chemistry, when keeping teams together, I remember like three to four years ago, there was this old picture of Damian Lillard flying all of his teammates to maybe it was in Mexico. It was one of those nice tropical places. And they were on vacation as a team, but they were also doing workouts. Those are the superstar things in my mind that transcend the stuff on the court. The superstar teammate is just as important as a superstar hooper, and the Clippers didn't have that in their two superstar players on the court. So some of the stuff that they got um, was they had their own personal security and trainers. Only Kawhi and Paul George were able to get that. Um, this is the craziest one to me. Kawhi and Paul George had the power for to, to control the team's schedule and traveling, leading to teammates to believe that Kawhi Leonard's canceled multiple practices that is absolutely insane it just is and you know what that could happen across if Le LeBron might do that as well but I, I doubt it I just doubt even if LeBron is not practicing I doubt he's going to be like I'm going to prevent my other 14 players on the roster from getting better it doesn't make sense for a single player to have all that much power and I am in full belief of having players or people owning their masters and I, I, I believe that to the fullest extent, once once you get to a certain point, you should be able to have some type of say. And and as and I say that as a fan of players and maybe not so much as a fan of teams, because as a fan of players and, and people in the media, I want everybody to be as comfortable as possible. Um, the, the, the best example of this actually happened today. Where if you did not know, J.J. Reddick has a podcast. It used to be with The Ringer, but he left The Ringer to create his own podcast network. And when he was with The Ringer, they basically have his name. So when he left The Ringer, he couldn't have the J.J. Reddick podcast anymore. He had to rebrand his entire show. And not even just that, today, after he had left, he had been gone for a few months now, The Ringer is now using J.J. Reddick's podcast feed to promote their other shows. J.J. Redick and Tommy Alter, they didn't own their masters then, right? So this bigger conglomerate owned everything that they were doing. And, and I want players and I want people to be able to own their masters, but it only can go to a certain extent. It just it can only go to a certain extent as a, as a fan of a team, right? I don't want Paul George and Kawhi Leonard determining whether my favorite team practices. I just don't. I just don't. And And – I honestly believe that like some of the some of the chemistry and role issues came into play heavily. Think about what the Clippers had. The Clippers had a team that was good last year. Before Kawhi and Paul George, they, they snuck into the playoffs. The hell, they they got rid of the biggest deficit in a single playoff game. I remember being in New York when the Clippers were playing against the, the Warriors in that game. I fell asleep during the third quarter and woke up to Sports Center talking about the Clippers winning. And I was like, what the heck? This team had roles. This team had players that knew what they were good at. They had leaders, and then they brought in two superstar players. And I think that every team in the league would do that 100% of the time. But now you're telling the rest of the team to figure it out now. Y'all had y'all have y'all knew who y'all were, but now you have to change it up. And it's so much different. When when Fred Van Vliet was talking about Kawhi Leonard. And that championship team with the Raptors, he basically was saying that Kawhi Leonard came into work and he left. He wasn't really a part of the gang. He It wasn't like this bond between teammates, which is completely okay. It is cool to have people that just go to work because at the end of the day, playing basketball is literally, literally their job. But somebody has to be the leader there. So if you have two superstar players and one of the guys just comes to work and, and then leaves, I need my other superstar player to keep the team together. And that's one of the reasons... That this Lakers team, and I don't like to compare them to, but it's it's hard not to in this situation. They both had two superstar players. They're both in L.A. They both had built a team on the fly. Like, the Lakers team was brand new when they won a championship, when you really think about it. But um, Danny Green, when he was talking about it on his podcast, he was saying that 
this is the most team chemistry he has ever been a part of with that Lakers team. And we're talking about Danny Green, who's a part of the Spurs. Whenever one player was going to the movies, the whole team was going to the movies. Whenever one player was going out to dinner, the whole team was going out to dinner. And he never experienced that before. Those are the type of things that elevate a good basketball team to a good overall team. It just is. And the Clippers didn't have that last year. And from the article from Johan, uh, like Johan uh, hopefully, again, I'm pronouncing that right. Um, he talked about the Clippers trying to do everything they can to remedy all of that, right? Basically bringing in Serge Ibaka, who's a great locker room guy, and bringing in Tyron Lu because Tyron Lu would hold players accountable. I don't know. I don't know. I, again, this is a team that can easily win a championship based on pure talent, 100%. But pure talent doesn't usually get it done. If that was the case, the Miami Heat would have destroyed the Dallas Mavericks in their one uh, championship series. It's not always about pure talent. It's about how you put it together. It's about the chemistry. It's about all the other things. Um, I feel like I'm missing a lot of things that I wanted to hit on, but it is what it is. Let me know what you think about the Clippers uh, going into this season. Um, obviously, they are still a contender. Um, all of the stuff that I said in this video can be voided if they just come out next season and just destroy people at the end of the day. Uh, I'm out, y'all. Call game.